Green. The Green, Caroline Woods are with me. Our senior markets correspondents, and uh, we do have some fun earnings here. Uh, that was a uh, tough close, a tough day, Caroline. It looked so much better when we spoke this morning. I mean, like, night and day. You know, it's funny, Oliver, I had this whole breakdown of market action that I was seeing for the MTL panel, and we didn't get to it. And I basically could look at those notes and tell you everything the opposite <laughs> at this point, because it was tech in the lead, Meg 7 minus Tesla all higher, up 2% or more, uh, you know, seeing a lot of, uh, you know, big green arrows, and instead it was a lot of red. Uh, the only thing that remained consistent from my notes was that Airbnb and Supermicrocomputer remained the worst to perform on the S&P 500 after earnings. But we saw several earnings losers today. It certainly wasn't, uh, you know, good news in terms of earnings. We saw Rivian, Lyft, Supermicro, Disney, Novo Nordisk, Airbnb, all lower after quarterly results. VF Corp, uh, Shopify, and Fortinet, the only three uh, big winners that I could see in from the earnings front. So also some, some winners heading into uh, the earnings that we're going to be talking about. So they were able to hold on to some gains. So uh, maybe it'll be a different story tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, uh, good point on the earnings drag. Supermicro, I feel, was a big red flag last night. I mean, I didn't know what was going on this morning when we were trying to rally the tech stuff with one of the early AI breakthrough winners uh, up massively. Biggest performer for like the first four or five months of the year, KG, when that was down double digits after a rally fade overnight like I'm not sure what people were looking for here I guess they were too blinded by the Bank of Japan comments well I think it was a little bit of a risk on tone going into this morning as well as last night if you actually looked at the futures we were going I know strong. so I think the market's been trying to go back to the things that it's used to uh, and that has really changed I mean the regime has changed in general and even the, the correlations have too so uh, once again we're trying to navigate this whole thing out we have a lot of volatility happening in the market we also have a little bit of low liquidity happening uh, right now too so just kind of look at these defensive names as you talked about utilities or even industrials uh, mega cap and or the large cap industrials have been doing pretty well because of the weakening dollar. So there's going to be pockets of strength and also pockets of weakness. But I think uh, if the trading strategy has has definitely changed since what we, from what we are used to over the last two years. Let's say that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So look, um, none of these stocks are really going to be moving the needle for us this afternoon. But uh, a few notable ones that could be fun. Zillow uh, always gives us some interesting insight into what's going on in the uh, housing world. Uh, that stock's coming out after a uh, pretty uh, rough couple quarters and uh, year so far. Monster Beverage, uh, also uh, a Clavio to kind of get a taste of how some of those newer issues over the past year are holding up. Uh, but Caroline, this is all going to be, I think, secondary to tomorrow. Jobless claims, that number becomes really important, I think, given that it's our only piece of economic data for the week and the market really needs something good. That would be nice to see that number come back down. Yeah, certainly, especially after the unemployment rate ticked higher. And there's so much concern now. All of a sudden, you know, it was like back, what was it, 2022, recession's coming, recession's coming, recession's coming. And then, you know, all of a sudden now, it, up, up until recently, it was, oh, Fed achieved the soft landing, Fed's achieving the soft landing. And now all of a sudden, recession talk is back in the picture. So, yeah, I think every data point, especially when it comes to the labor market, is going to be uh, very key. In terms of some of the earnings that we're seeing, uh, you know, I, I'm interested to see what Monster Beverage has to say. Just because we saw Coca-Cola, uh, you know, really beat to the upside, but Pepsi talked about kind of weakening demand or sluggish consumer demand. I don't drink energy drinks. I know they're expensive. It's another read on the consumer. So I'm, I'm curious yeah. to see how that goes. Yeah, and that's been a really interesting sector uh there's so much competition there shifting preferences that one's pretty fun i think the most important like macro wise is going to be zillow uh group given the housing implications zillow's been dropping like a rock for six days straight things lost 20 percent uh and they're gonna get a new ceo uh so the existing ceo steps down jeremy waxman who was the coo uh will be replacing rich barton so um, kind of a handoff there. You know, when you go f from CEO handing it off to COO, that's probably one of the more relaxed, welcoming uh, by the market kind of transitions, I would think, KG, you know, handing it off to basically the right-hand man. 
Yeah, definitely, especially when you're seeing the stock price slide to the downside here. So that might renew some confidence that uh, they're trying to right the ship uh, for now. And and once again, we have to kind of get a little bit more of uh, clarity when it comes to their outlook moving forward. This housing market has been very unique when it comes to the uh, lack of houses that have been on the market and then also the lack of purchasers or buyers. And is a lower rate environment really going to spark that demand? I think that's the question. When you're looking at their Q2 revenue, that did actually, actually exceed the street's expectations coming in at 572 million uh street was looking for around 530 uh, 538. I just had this number. Up. Yeah, about 538. Yeah, five, yeah 538. Yeah, 538 for 539 and some change. So that's actually really good. Rental revenue actually increased by 29% on a year-over-year -year basis as well. And they're actually seeing a pretty healthy amount when it comes to mortgage revenue, uh, actually up around 42% year-over-year. And that's because of the 125% increase on a year-over-year -year basis in purchase loan origination volumes. Yeah, that was a big uh, beat. It's a huge beat. Yeah. 759 so, uh, million you know, in loan originations. A a analysts were looking for 526. Yeah, they're ramping that up significantly. Here. Hmm. So I think that along with the, the leadership change is probably giving them a little bit, bit of a boost for now. We've definitely seen worse reports from Zillow, Caroline. I mean, it's pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. Some of these numbers, pretty good. Yeah, especially since it was kind of a disappointing spring selling season, mortgage rates still high, so there's sort of a question mark about Zillow heading in. I was just taking a look, traffic to Zillow Group's mobile apps, uh, 231 million monthly active users, or average monthly unique users. That was flat year over year. Visits during Q2, two and a half billion, up 4% year over year. Uh, Zillow's been kind of trying to become this, like, housing super app, you know, a lot of non-portal offerings in terms right. of mortgages and agent tools and such. So, um, I mean, it's going to be interesting what they have to say in terms of uh, their outlook, because I know back in May, they said they continue to expect double-digit revenue growth for the full year. I'm going through, I don't see anything in terms of the outlook uh, just yet, but I think that's going to be key if they can maintain that, uh, potentially even boost it given the beat on the top line. It's interesting also, Barton, going back out because uh, the, the history was that uh, he was there and then left and then came back as they were building basically that super app that you talked about and expanding their business, you know, beyond just the site into actually connecting people, getting mortgages, all that stuff. So uh, the fact that he's now leaving again kind of seems like maybe smooth sailing. Again, I feel like as far as CEO departures go, probably going to be one of the most uh, innocuous versions of such an event you could really ask for. Kind of sounds like they're happy with the way they've built this out and that, you know, uh, look, what will happen on the macro will happen. And he does say in an interview uh, that was uh, obviously embargoed by some of these outlets, but I'm reading the quote from Bloomberg. Waxman, the new CEO, says the macro is choppy and I think will remain choppy. But it sounds like the product build out and the machine is running pretty smoothly at this point, KG. This is best earnings in a while. Uh, it's a good earnings announcement. I mean, actually, if you kind of look on the year over year comps, uh, it, it's doing all right. I think the, when you look at gross profit, you are seeing a little bit of a decline on a year over year basis, but I think mm -hmm. they're hitting all the right areas here. And if, there, if we don't have any housing risk um, as far as uh, mortgage default rates, uh, you know, spiking to the upside, uh, the, you know, they're going to, they're probably going to see a fair amount of activity in an environment uh, that could actually see, you know, 200 basis points, 250 basis points worth of cuts by the end of next year. I mean, that is the possibility that's out there. Uh, that might have a, uh, a negative reaction when it comes to the origination fees. You know, it might get a little bit more competitive uh, in that respect, right? So they might see some price cuts there, but overall you want to have strong volume going through their pipeline because uh, that's really what their business is designed for. All right. And still losing money on a gap basis. Uh, the adjustments get them to positive. But yeah, so I mean, are there st still uphill battles? Uh, it seems like yes, but at least like what they do and what markets they're in after uh, the past kind of what five years basically of really kind of building out the business model. It seems like they've kind of settled on it. So uh, I don't imagine that there's going to be any massive changes. Uh, at this point. Uh, last thought, Caroline? You know, I was just taking a look at the, the stock reaction to this news and, you know, we're not seeing a huge pop, but a little less negativity in terms of this number, or in terms of these numbers, in terms of the CEO move. So uh, this is going to be one. I'll, my last thought will come once I hear what they have to say on the earnings call. Yeah. Safe right. answer. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, sure, it's about a buck and a half right now.
again, definitely we have seen worse. Uh, but, uh, all right, a new CEO, too, going to be interesting. Uh, I'm kind of also curious about uh, what happens with uh, HubSpot, what happens with Clavio. HubSpot's up a little bit right now. Something worth thinking about, uh, given the uh, company uh, does kind of get us closer into the cloud reporting season as we uh, continue to think about the kind of next section of earnings. Uh, we looked at a few winners. I mean, Palantir was really good. Uh, HubSpot kind of gets us closer into some of the CRM type stuff. Um, not a, a good performer, but that's kind of the point, uh, Kevin, is that most stuff in cloud has been really weak for like four or five months. So I feel like the bar should be a little bit lower for some of these companies than they were for a lot of the MAG7 stocks. Do you think that might be fair? Yeah, it appears so. I mean, they have been able to beat both on the top and bottom line, and their guidance actually looks pretty good, too. The adjusted earnings per share for Q2 came in at $1.94. Street was looking for $1.64. And when you're looking at the revenue, that actually came in at uh, $637 million. Street was looking for $619 million. And then once again, their guide for next quarter, as well as for fiscal year 2024, both exceed the Street's expectations. So nice little pop. I think it's up around 9% and 10% in the after hours trading here. I don't have any other commentary uh, regarding the 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 outlook or their macro view of the, the market and if they are seeing some pockets of weakness when it comes to enterprise spend. But when you're guiding the way that they just did with a very low bar, I mean, it's really hard to try to turn the stock around at the downside uh, post this report outside of something that they do say on the conference call. A, a stock that a lot of people like and um, seems to be validated. So, uh, and again, we've even within the kind of carnage of the constant fade in the market, there have been winners. So we've been hitting them here on the earnings uh, every every day. There are uh, companies that are being rewarded for what they're doing. So if you're in the right spot, right time, it seems like so far the market's not that apocalyptic, you know, where it just destroys everything in its path. So HubSpot seems like it should be living up to some of these expectations. Analysts have loved this stock. Revenue's up 20 percent. Uh, Outlook looks pretty good. You know, beating the earnings, too, compared to a year ago. Pretty big jump. So maybe a little silent winner here for tomorrow, Caroline. Yes, another another stock too in a similar realm in terms of uh, you know marketing manager is Clavio. Yeah, Clavio. And as you guys were talking about that one, Clavio was actually rallying as well Hit because me. it was a beat on both the top and bottom line. Another stock that analysts love as well. Seventy six percent have a buy rating as opposed to eighty three percent, which have a buy rating on HubSpot. But yeah, when I was taking a look at the numbers, adjusted EPS of fifteen cents per share, easily topped expectations of three cents per share. Sales, meanwhile, of two hundred and twenty two million. Uh, represent a growth of 35 percent, also surpassed analyst expectations of 212 million. So uh, easy beat on both the top and bottom line. Um, I'm, you know, taking a look at the early reaction, you can see a nice pop in, in reaction to this report. I mean, it's important to note, similar to HubSpot, it was down about 16 percent year to date and down 11 percent in August alone. So the bar was definitely lower for this one, but it looks like this could be a winner following this report. Yeah, another one looking like it. Uh, so good advantage, I guess, this earnings season getting beat up on the way down. This has been a pretty uh, frustrating trade basically since the, the debut. So uh, it's been a one-way street for the most part lower. Uh, but all right, uh, you know, nice little, nice little bounce here for both these. Appreciate that very much, guys. Uh, no monster yet. So I guess we'll have to uh, wake up with the energy drink uh, discussion tomorrow. Thanks, Caroline <laughs> Woods and Kevin Green. Very